Never fails. Every morning, my brilliant brother grabs my books and leaves me his. See Robbie anywhere in that mass of juveniles? Hey, Mike, who's looking for your brother? Concentrate your gaze on yon luscious creature. Hey, how about that, man? She's looking at you. And sending messages. A little young, but very cute. Oh, hi, Robbie. Oh, hi. There is a gorgeous man. That is a dream. A real dream. I'd give anything to know who he is. <laughs> That's Robbie Douglas. You know him? Sure, we're buddies. I've known old Robbie a long time. It's so great about him. He's beautiful. Robbie Douglas. Even his name is beautiful. You've sure got a weird idea of beauty. Okay, why don't you keep your books away from my stuff? You left the house before I did, Bean Brain. Why don't you look what books you're taking? Hey, come on, Mike, let's go, huh? We're gonna be late getting back to school. What'd you do with my homework papers? Uh, well, I put them between two pieces of bread and I ate them for lunch. Well, who folded them? Hey, we'll see you, okay, Robbie? Come on, yeah, Russ. Why don't you be real sweet and introduce me to Robbie? Okay. We'll see you at the library tonight. Hey, that little blonde is still flashing in the green light. Awful young, junior high. You kidding? She's gonna be going in the 10th grade next year. Hey, I know how you can meet her. But she's at the library every night. Oh, don't let me forget to return those books tonight. Hey, uh, you might try the key. Me? Me? She's the prettiest girl in the whole school. Yeah, she still wants to meet you. Maybe she's stupid or something. Well, I gotta go. See you at the library tonight. Yeah, Gordy, I'll be there. Oh, boy, will I be there. <laughs> Maybe you better start over. Three of those hairs are going the wrong way. Ha uh ha, -huh. I'm laughing. Ha <laughs> ha. How about laughing your way right down to the kitchen and start wiping the dinner dishes? Okay, okay. Those trash cans don't haul themselves out to the curb either, you know. How come I always gotta do everything? I gotta get to the library. Where's old Mike and how about Chip? I'll take care of old Mike and how about Chip. You just get down there. <laughs> What have you got on? It's lotion. After shaving. After shaving what? <laughs> you smell like an explosion in a barber shop. <laughs> now, come on, let's get to the dishes. Come on. I'm coming. Trap, would you mind transferring yourself to some other part of the house? Hmm? Why don't you remind me? Chip. Will you get this pile of hay out of the kitchen? Here, Trap. <laughs> Here, Trap. <laughs> Here, Trap. <laughs> well, now don't start a conversation with him. Just uh, come and get him, will you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Either there's a window in that comic book or that boy has radar. <laughs> I'll swear, rounding those kids up to work is like cornering a couple of eels. Yeah, come on, Mike, Robbie. Come on, Robbie, give us a hand in the kitchen. Grab a towel, Mike, and start drying. Oh, Dad's using a towel. Oh, we're rich. We have two dish towels. I'll use the other one. <laughs> Why can't Robbie dry the dishes? I'll take the trash cans out. I'm taking the cans out. Who said so? I said so. I can't stand around all night drying dishes. I gotta get to the library. Well, that's a fat reason. I gotta go to the library, too. Now, here, start drying. I'm not gonna. You got the towel. Robbie, I'm gonna belt you one. Go uh, on. Just try it. I dare you. Go on. Will you fellas knock it off? You're just about old enough now to start settling your arguments without whacking each other. All right. We'll settle it like gentlemen. Well, now you're making sense. I'll take the cans off. No, no wait a minute. I don't, I don't, What's the matter with those kids? Oh, let them alone. They're 
they're not going to hurt each other. Well, you keep saying that. It's all noise and no damage. It's natural for kids to fire a little. Helps them let off steam. Can't they let off steam without braining each other? What are we trying to raise around here? A couple of intelligent human beings or a pair of wildcats? There you see, it's all over. Yeah. Oh, sure it's all over. Somebody just clobbered somebody with a trash can lid. Wait, wait, wait. Well, Robbie, how many times have I told you you can't win by fighting? Who's fighting? We flipped the lid and I still lost. <laughs> You sure Robbie's coming? I talked to him. He said he'd be here. Maybe he went to the wrong library. There's no such thing as the wrong library. The library's a library. There he is. Where? Right there in the windbreaker. That's not Robbie. It most certainly is. That's the boy I saw in front of school. Well, you were looking at the wrong guy. He's... That's, that's Robbie's big brother. He's the one I want to meet. Oh, boy. You promised. But... But I can't. Oh, yes, you can. Come on. What are you doing? Come on. <laughs> uh, uh, hi, Mike. Oh, hi, Gordy. Oh! <laughs> uh, Mike? Judy? Uh, this is Mike. I'm very happy to know you, Mike. Well, it was nice meeting you, too. Well, I gotta go. I'll see y'all later. I saw you in front of school today. I love your car. Well, thank you. I remember you were with Gordy. He's just a friend of my family. Awfully nice, but terribly young. Here, let me carry some of this for you. I don't mind walking home, really. It's only about eight blocks. Eight blocks? Come on, I'll give you a lift. You'll you're, never make it. You're very kind. <laughs> oh, hi, Robbie. Well, what do you think you're doing? Well, what does it look like I'm doing? You know my brother, don't you, Judy? Hi. I have a little brother, too. His name's Robbie. I've seen you around school. See you at the house, Gordon. All right, Tramp, you've given your imitation of a watchdog. Go on back to sleep. Pipe down, pipe down, stupid. There's nobody out there. What's the matter, boy? You hear something? Nobody out there, see? Where's Robbie, Dad? He went to the library. On his bike? Yeah, I guess so. Why? His bike's on the front lawn. Well, maybe he's roughing it tonight and walked out of the library. <laughs> Dad, how come you're always making Mike and Robbie stop slugging each other? Well, I uh, try to keep them from slugging each other because no argument is ever settled, no problem is ever solved by fighting. Brother. Animals fight because they haven't the intelligence to settle their differences any other way. But human beings can sit down and talk things over and weigh the facts on each side and come to a fair and reasonable agreement. They don't have to tear each other apart like uh, predatory beasts of the jungle. Who's a predatory beast? <laughs> I never started a fight in my life. But I finished many when I can tell you that. But I don't call that being a predatory beast. Okay, skip the beast. Come on, Chipper, time for bed. Say, Steve, 
Uh, speaking about fighting, did I ever tell you about the bus driver over at Plainview? Yes, yes, you did. But you didn't tell me. Well, it was on Saturday night, way after midnight, Bob. and the bunch were coming out of Moriarty's. Bob, it's not a bedtime story. Go ahead. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll get the boxing glove. Never mind, Bob. Well, spare the boxing glove, spoil the child. <laughs> now, you two stop acting like a couple of animals. Now, what brought this on? Human nature. He jumped me. I was just walking up to the door, and he jumped on me for no reason. No reason! Oh, oh that sounds like dirty fighting, right? <laughs> Tramp, stop it. <laughs> stop it. Shut up, Tramp. Now, tell me, why did you jump on Mike? Because he's a big, fat double cross. No, wait, just a minute. Got neighbors. Now, why did you jump out, Mike? Stick to the facts, will you? I'll tell you the facts. Judy was going to be at the library, and Gordy was going to introduce her to me. Mm -hmm. She's waiting there to meet me, and... He wasn't it. waiting to meet you. And this big, fat double-crosser snuck down there and cut me out. Oh, for crying out loud, Mike. Are you kidding? I don't blame you, Robbie. Just... Gordy was... This... Gordy and me had it all planned out, and you had to stick your big, fat face in it. Just fighting fire with fire. Now, just a minute. Now, will you answer one question for me? Who is this Judy? Driving her all over town in your big fancy car. An eye for an eye. <laughs> will you tell me who is Judy? He's got no right taking out my girl. Your girl? Oh, I introduced him to her. Why, Robbie, you little so-and-so. Look, how can you both be interested in the same girl? Yeah. Well, I'm not interested in her. But if he's going to get nasty about it, maybe I will be. I don't blame you. She's in junior high, and that's my territory. Right, Dad? Right. <laughs> well, if you're going to start cutting up the school district into uh, hunting areas, I suppose you've got a point, yeah. Well, for Pete's sake, Steve, uh, whose side are you on? I'm not on any side. I'm the arbitrator. We're discussing. You think it's okay for him... You think it's okay for him to cut me out when I had a date with her? I didn't say that. Dad. You think it's all right for him to... You think it's all right for him to say I'm cutting him out just because I accidentally meet a girl in a library? I didn't say that either. Well, for a guy that isn't saying anything, you're doing an awful lot of talking. Well, I'm getting sick of everybody kicking me around. I can't even get help from my own father. Well, I don't need any help. I can take care of myself. And a boy, Robbie, stick to your guns. And I'll fix you, wise guy. You wait. Uh, Robbie. Talk about justice. You let Robbie get away with murder. How come I'm always wrong? Oh, now, look, Mike. I'd like to see you on my side once. Just once. Hold on, Mike. Old Chinese proverb. Man who walk in the middle of the road, get hit by trucks going both ways. <laughs> Mike? I'm sorry about what I said downstairs, Dad. You're not always wrong, Mike. You know I don't think that. And as far as choosing sides is concerned, the only side I'm on is the side of our family. That darn Robbie. I know, Mike. But Robbie's going through a rough period right now. He... Well, we just have to be patient with him for a while. Well, I... I guess I'm just tired. Yeah, I guess maybe we all are. So, uh, why don't we sleep on it? We'll uh, talk it over in the morning. Hmm? Good night. Good night, Mike.
Robbie. Robbie, you asleep? Chipper? Morning, Dad. How'd you sleep? Fine. Good. Who won the fight last night? Mike or Robin? Oh, uh, nobody won, Chip. They were just a little excited, that's all. As they say in the diplomatic corps, war was averted. Huh? I said war was averted. Oh, averted? Yeah, I got in between them. <laughs> Maybe they'll start another fight this morning. No, I don't think so, Chipper. As a matter of fact, I imagine after a good night's sleep, they've forgotten the whole thing. Are you kidding? The two of them are down there in the kitchen. There's a cold war going on down there that'll freeze the warts off a polar bear. Oh, boy! I still say they should put on the boxing gloves. What we need around here is less talk and more action. <laughs> boy. Get up happy, shift in bed. <laughs> Robbie, Mike. Listen out, Chip. Better drink that quick before it freezes. <laughs> what is a Cold War? This is, and the worst kind. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Bob. At least we're sitting at the same table. Bob, will you ask Dad to pass the cream, please? Pass the cream to Robbie, please. Now, one good thing about a Cold War is that you can bring the foreign ministers of the two countries to a conference table like this and discuss the issues. Chip, tell Robbie to quit hogging the sweet rolls. Quit hogging the sweet rolls, Robbie. <laughs> Actually, this is very much like an international situation. You fellas are two countries who are having a border dispute over well, some land that you both feel belongs to you. Of course, uh, the disputed land in this case happens to be a girl named Judy. Over a girl? Jeepers, I thought it was something important. Bob, will you tell Dad to tell Chip to pipe down? Tell Chip to pipe down. Uh, pipe down, Chip. <laughs> now, in a case like this, a larger, more powerful country, me, steps in to call a peace conference. And uh, here we are. Now, who wants to speak first? <clears throat> Bob, will you ask Dad to pass the butter? Will you pass the butter? Please? 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 Please. <laughs> All right, then I'll start. Now, each of you two countries state your claim to the disputed territory, namely Judy Land. <laughs> now, Foreign Minister Robbie. Tell him I got a raw deal. And the first chance I get, I'm gonna clout Mike right in the chops. Atta boy, stick up for your rights. You keep asking for it, small fry, and you're gonna get it. That's telling them. Bob, this is a peace conference. There won't be any peace around here till these two guys fight it out. Oh, now, Bob, you're not making sense. Well, that's not bad for a predatory beast. Well, don't get yourself all wrought up about it. Who's all wrought up? I just want to see some action. Me, too. Now, look, Bob, 
A peace conference is no good if everybody doesn't pull together. One rotten apple in the barrel and the whole barrel spoils. Rotten apple. Sweet roll, Robbie? Thanks. I already got one. Go. No. Mike? Oh, uh, no thanks. Well, I guess they're all yours, Sid. Jeepers, I get all the sweet rolls, and I'm not even a country. <laughs> Somebody pass the butter. <laughs> Please. I'll take it away. Summit conference. <laughs> no thanks. Bob, I'm sorry. I, uh, I wish you wouldn't take things so personally. All I meant was that, well, our family is strong because we work together as a unit. And if we start squabbling among ourselves, we can ruin that. Well, you know as well as I do that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Now I'm a weak link, huh? No, I, I didn't mean that, Bob. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake, will you start acting your age? Yeah? Well, I'm old enough to know that a good, clean fight is better than a lot of dirty names. Nobody's calling anybody any names. Our kids are going to grow up to be a bunch of sissified, mealy-mouthed, pink-dee bannywaves. Bob, will you listen to me? A lot of whimpering, sniveling, pampered pussyfooters. Will you please listen to me? Oh, I know, I know. I'm just a beastly, rotten, weak thing, predatory old... Bob, shut up! Uh-oh. The H-bomb. Just listen to me for ten consecutive seconds, will you? There's nothing wrong with fighting in the ring for sport. But these kids have to learn that they cannot settle their petty personal misunderstandings with their fists. That's late. I've got to go. Oh, yeah? Uh, well, let me tell you something. <laughs> this peace conference idea of yours hasn't settled anything either, and it's not going to. Well, at least nobody's hitting anybody. You can't keep these kids from fighting. You can't change human nature. Well, I can try. They're probably out in the backyard right now turning each other to pieces. Yeah, you hope. Dad? I'm sorry to butt in on your summit conference, but... What happened to the fight? Well, uh, the small powers decided to submit their differences to a, a fact-finding committee. You mean you're making up? Well, gosh, who's got time for our little war when you big guys are getting ready to blow everything up? <laughs> blow everything up? What are you talking about? We're just standing here having a little talk. You, you, you can't settle anything without talking things over. Right, Steve? Right, Bob. This is the way all peace conferences should work out. Yeah, yeah. Well, how about a cup of coffee? Well, Bob, I have... Yeah. You see, Bob, that's what I meant about a peace conference. What'd you have my rock on you, Mike? What was it doing on my bed? Come on, Mike. I guess you're right. Sometimes there just has to be a little action. I'll put a stop to that. Now for a nice quiet cup of coffee. The nice thing about thin soup like this is it's not too filling. Uh, 
I mean, uh, it sort of whets your appetite for the rest of the dinner. <laughs> what rest Shh. of the... What's that? Nothing. <laughs> okay, that does it. Now get to your homework. Never mind the dishes. I'll take care of them. What do you mean that does it? Is this all we're getting for dinner? Are, are, are we on some kind of a diet or something? No, that's just Bub's corny way of telling us we're out of food. Out of food? Yeah, Bub's all shook up. Jim, you're darn right I'm all shook up. Look, Dad, I don't mind I've doing the cooking, to scrubbing, and, I have a few sewing, and the housework around here. I mean, I can't but when it comes to running the errands and buying the groceries, by George, I think I mean, it's, it's only fair, fair that I have a little Dad, help. I, Let's now, just a minute, just a minute. Mike promised Bob to pick him up after school and... Look here, I young man, but we want your to let you know. I would, but I You've certainly You've already done plenty around Why don't you today? butt Just out anyway? All right, let's not argue. It's not good on an empty stomach. My promise. <laughs> now, it seems fantastic, but I gather we're out of food. And all because Mike, for apparently good reasons, has upset Bob. And uh, justifiably so by not taking him shopping. Correct? Today, yesterday, and the day before that. Well, it's not my fault, Dad. So darn many unexpected things came up at school. Unexpected is right. Rally day, post-rally day, pre-rally day. I've had my fill of senior activities. I'm fed up. I wish I were. Well, it seems we do have a little problem. Mike has some obligations to meet, and Bub has a few things to pick up downtown. A few things? Laundry, cleaning, groceries. And I was supposed to pick up the lawnmower about a week ago. How am I going to get all those things in that sawed-off little jalopy of his? It's not sawed off, it's cut down. Well, sawed off or cut down, I'm sure it'll hold all the things you have to pick up, Bob. It has that big trunk in the back. Are you kidding? That trunk's been rusted shut for years. It isn't rusted, it's locked. Oh, well, Mike, unlock it. Well, I, I lost the key. I'm getting hungrier every minute. <laughs> See? Well, all we have to do is make a slight adjustment. We yeah? don't ask me to adjust. I've adjusted myself right out of food. Now, Bob, don't be inflexible. Healthy living is simply an endless, endless series, series of, of small adjustments. adjustments. <laughs> That's right. Fooey. <laughs> Just a minute. I'm starving. Starving to death. All right, here's the solution. Mike, tomorrow you drive the station wagon to school and arrange your schedule so that you can take your granddad shopping in the afternoon, okay? Okay. Dad? Are you gonna take the bus? No, no, I'm not proud. I'll drive your car. Now, what do you say we all adjust ourselves to a big hamburger down at Freddy's Drive? Yeah, Dad! Oh, I'm sorry, Chip. What is it? I forget. Mother, come on, get you. <laughs> Now, personally, Douglas, I'm convinced that you're the right man. You're a clear thinker, sharp eye for detail, and not likely to get bogged down by government red tape. Thank you, Couldn't have gotten in without him, could I? <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. Good. Figures you were the right man. <laughs> Thank you. Shall we take your car? Oh, certainly, General. Oh, I, uh, I forgot. We've had a little transportation mixed up at the house, and I'm driving my son's car. I don't think we Are can... you apologizing, Douglas? Well, no, sir, it isn't that. It's just... Well, adjust that. to it. Can't be inflexible, you know. I know, sir. Life, Life is, is just, just a, a series of... <laughs> small adjustments. <laughs> Come on, Johnson. No time for that. May I have your identification, please? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Douglas. Ah, look out! <laughs> Sorry, General, I didn't know that. Uh, come on, Johnson, let's get out. Well, see you at your house for dinner tonight. Fine, General, about 6.30 sharp. Huh? Uh, good. I'm looking forward to a good home-cooked dinner for uh, a change. Here, can I help you? Come on, Johnson. <laughs> Maybe you better get out this side. <laughs> <laughs> At this rate, we may have to have dinner in the car. Yes. Uh, hold it. Lean forward, Johnson. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's clear thinking, General. Yeah. It certainly makes it more comfortable, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Thanks for the ride. You're perfectly welcome, sir. See you at 6, sir. All right. We'll uh, be ready and waiting, General. You sure I can't pick you up someplace? No, thanks. I'll take a cab. <laughs> Douglas used to be a fine pilot. Funny. Some men just never adjust to civilian life. <laughs> Come on, Johnson. Yes, no, 
I'll shut off your gas if you don't get in the house. There's a two-star general coming to dinner tonight. Get in there. Wow, why didn't you say so? Well, I was just too shy to mention it. Now get in there. Will you dry up? <laughs> Garfield. Garfield next. Accidents and murders and platinum-haired hotsy tutsies. I beg your pardon? Same thing every day. Oh, yeah. I haven't read a newspaper in 10 years. How'd the Yankees make out? Oh, well, they won three to two. What's the news about that? To call themselves newspapers. I like history myself. How about you? Yeah, your history's fine. History's like life. I always thought I'd write a history in my life someday. That'd make real interesting reading for people, wouldn't it? Well, I guess that'd depend on what kind of life you had. I'm glad you asked me that. We was all born in a town upstate called Rockfield. <laughs> there were me and my four brothers and five sisters. Things happen sometimes once in a while. Think that'd make an interesting beginning to the story? <laughs> that'd be fine. Just to give you an idea what it was like, when the chores was done, we weren't too tuckered out. Why, we'd all of us... Well, no, not all of us, because... <laughs> Wasn't that something? Freckles to match. Never seen so many freckles on one kid in my whole life. Cleveland. Cleveland next. More freckles than a dog has fleas. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was Eulalia's boy. You remember me telling you about Eulalia. Oh, yeah. She was uh, Uncle Rice's niece. Oh. You never said that. You played the ukulele. Banjo. The banjo. Right here, freckle-faced and a temper to match. Sorner, no use dickering with him. What do you think of that? Never forget the day when we was down chopping weeds over by where the dead cottonwoods used to be. Uh, McKinley. McKinley next. I took that old saw blade and fastened it onto that old hoe handle with a piece of rusty baling wire. <laughs> Our pruning time was just about as handy as a pocket on a shirt. Taft Street. Of course, probably my book wouldn't sell so good. It ain't gonna be filled with all kinds of murder and women screaming and science friction and all. Oh, here's my stop. Well, enjoyed talking to you. Mm. <laughs> That's another thing that's wrong with newspapers nowadays. People don't take the time to talk to one another. The bus went right by and didn't even stop. What do you think happened, Bob? I don't know, but your dad will probably be on the next one. He better be anyway, because the general's due here pretty soon. Well, maybe he decided to take a cab. Well, do you think I ought to come home? No, nope, stay where you are. He'll be along pretty quick. Harding. Harding? What happened to McKinley? He was assassinated. I mean the street. Uh, oh, we passed that about 10 minutes ago. I shall slept through my stop. <laughs> Let me off. Hoover. Hoover next. I wonder if I could use your phone. I've had a little oh, trouble. Oh, come in. Oh, come in, my, uh, my mentor. Come in, sir. I come in, Mr. Bell. Come and tell me. Come in. But I'm good. Oh, 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 I'm good.
darn Robbie. Always on the phone when I need it. Steve, <laughs> where in tarnation are you? Well, never mind that. Bob is General Heffler there. No, according to the kitchen clock, he's got 15 minutes. Unless he's late. General Heffler is never late, Bob. You now, when he gets your there... wife, yeah? Uh, yes. yes. Uh, no, I, I mean, I'm not married. Uh, Bob, where's Mike? Not married? He'd make, he'd make some puns for our unmarried guest. Yeah, I got a little nervous and I took a bus. And, uh, maybe I better call a cab. No, no, no. Mike will be calling me back any minute. I'll have him pick you up. Okay, I'm at... Uh, what, what is uh, 420 Hoover. 420 Van Hoover. Yeah, it's a White House and it's right on the corner. Hedwig, Hedwig, my old the daughter. Beautiful girl, yeah? Yes, very pretty. Only yeah. 35. Uh, Bob, uh, I'll be waiting outside. Hedwig is not married also. Uh, bro, uh, oh, Hedwig oh. makes it herself. Thank you very much. Bob, are you still there? Yeah. What's going on? Sounds like you're having a party. Robbie, you big bag of wind. I'll try you once more in a few minutes, and then I'm going home. And, Bob, if uh, General Heffler gets there before I do, for Pete's sake, be careful what you say to him, will you? He's strong. No, no. Good cook, too. No, no, I didn't mean he that. Makes I, all I, her own clothes. No, I just want you to remember that contract he has in his pockets is our food for the next three months. Yeah. Okay, goodbye. Fine, young girl. Sings, plays the tuba. Well, not at the same time, I bet. <laughs> you like bowling? Oh, yes, yes, I, uh, I like to bowl. Yeah, that, Hedwig yeah. bowl 180. 100, and she loves girl. children, too. I'll bet she does. Maybe next time you and Hedwig go bowling, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I mean, I'm sure she'll make somebody a wonderful wife. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, don't you like it? Oh, I'm sure it's very good, but I, I, I'm in her. Thanks for uh, She has good sense of humor. I can see that. In her very own shaking account, too. <laughs> Boy, this just isn't my day. General Heffler's probably ringing the doorbell right now, and here I stand. Of course, I know Bob and the boys will treat him as a general should be treated. I hope. I'll get it! Hey, Bob, there's a big, clunky guy here to see Dad. <laughs> my name is Heffler, Major General of the United States Air Force. Oh, yeah. Come on in, Sarge. General. You gonna give my dad that important contract, mister? General! Steve just called. Sounded like he was at a party on the other side of town, Sarge. I am not a sergeant and I am not a mister. I am an important general who is not going to give your father an important contract! 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 Are you getting on or aren't you? Oh, I'm sorry you stopped. I... I'm just waiting for my boy. He's going to pick me up. Unless something else has gone wrong. Okay. But if he's like my kid brother, you may be standing there all night. Hey. You, uh, you talked me into it. Huh? Boy, the characters you meet driving a bus. You know, I could write a book about it. It'd be darned interesting, too. Why, just the other day, this alarm got on my bus. <laughs> Funny. I'm sure Bub said he'd be standing right on the corner. Not there. Well, listen, Mike, I just talked to him. Are you sure you're at 42nd and Hoover? Sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Mr. Swenson said Dad just left here. Who? Swenson, I'm calling from his house. Maybe you're hungry, yeah? Uh, well, yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, Bob, what do I do now? Uh, tear, tear, bring the tray for this nice, good-looking young man. <laughs> Beautiful girl, yeah? My youngest. <laughs> How do you do? Bob, are you there? Very fine, and she'll be so good. Tear makes it herself. Nice. And such a good cook, that girl, at her age, too. <laughs> you like 
Rajka, ja... Bob? Bob? Hello, Mike. I'm sorry, but my butterfly rolls were burning. Yes. Jeepers, yeah. Bob. When's that general getting here? Between this darn tie and the hunger pains, I'm about gone. Serves you right. Mike, you stay right where you are, and I'll call you back. Okay, Bob. You like to dance? It's harmony six, five, four, three, seven. Tell her, come show this nice, good-looking young man the polka. And make it quick, will you, Bob? Yes, sir. I'll get right on it. Goodbye. Oh, my gosh, the general. You stay here. I got a job for you. Chip, the door. Bob, can I eat first? No. Chip, get the door. I'm coming. Now, you hightail it down to the McKinley Street bus stop. Hey, Bob, there's a big guy here in a clunky uniform to see Dad. <laughs> You saw something, Dad? No, no, no. Just thinking. Well, I sure am. Am I? I mean, are what? Sore. This darn crossbar sure isn't built for comfort. Oh. <laughs> well, stay with it. You've only got a couple of more blocks. <laughs> hey, Robbie. Read this telegram again, will you? Boy, you should have seen the look on Bob's face when the big guy in the clunky uniform turned out to be a telegraph boy. <laughs> Cancel dinner plans. Call back to Washington. We'll tell you about project tomorrow. If your phone is not busy. <laughs> Signed, G.A. Heffler, Major General, United States Air Force. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> well, there I was getting all lathered up over nothing. I uh, wonder what happened to Mike. <laughs> Robbie, I bet we've got the only house in America where you can wake up in the morning and not possibly imagine what's going to happen to you before you go to bed at night. 